Hi everyone, Terry Welbrock here of the Healing Place podcast and excited to share the happy news that another audiobook has been released. The name of the first book is The Best Bedtime Stories for Stressed Out Adults, Relaxing Tales and Guided Meditations to Relieve Anxiety and Depression, Promote Deep Sleep, Healing and Mindfulness. And then the second one, um, Volume 2, will be out with more stories and uh, more meditations. I just feel incredibly blessed to be a part of uh, the creative process of putting this audiobook out into the world. Um, it has stories, and I'll let um, the author talk about the stories that uh, and what the inspiration was behind them, so I won't talk about them myself right now. And then the stories are followed by guided meditations, uh, but her vision for the books was to have soft, relaxing, soothing, almost meditative music in the background. And so to be able to work with her um, in deciding what music goes in uh, behind each of the meditations, the meditations have different music than the narrations. So there's a sample if you go to um, Amazon, you can type in Terry Wellbrock, T-E-R-I-W-E-L-L-B-R-O-C-K, um, and it'll pull up all of my audiobooks, but you'll find it there. And then you can listen to the sample if you click on the audiobook link. Um, and yeah, you can hear it for yourself and then click purchase. Um, if you have Audible, you can use a credit or you can purchase the book outright. You can also go to my website, terrywellbrock.com. While you're there, you can sign up for my monthly Hope for Healing newsletter. But go to the books and blogs page, books and blog page, uh, and that has links as well um, to purchase and listen to the samples of the audiobooks that I have out there. But yeah, go check this out. Very exciting news. I will like, keep you posted about when the second book is released, hopefully in the next, uh, next couple of weeks. All right. Now for today's beautiful episode. Thanks. Welcome everybody to the Healing Place podcast. I'm your host, Terry Welbrock. I was just telling my guest, I just came from the beach, so I've, I'm frazzled. I've got beach hair and sand all over me, but because I looked at the time and I was like, oh my gosh, I have a podcast I got to run. So <laughs> today I have with me Madeline Popelka, and she is a writer, trauma survivor, and mental health advocate. So welcome, Madeline. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited for this conversation. Oh, me too. I When I was looking at your website, but I also hopped on your Instagram, um, which is amazing because you have such a great following over, I think when I looked, it was like 202,000 plus. Um, but there was a quote, and I, I don't know, I didn't even look if it was something you posted today about people being on their own trauma journey and that just because you haven't experienced it, that doesn't mean you can criticize it. And so I just love that. And so I love that you put out quotes and, and your philosophies and your thoughts on it. So yeah, talk to us about your journey and how you got to this place of, of guiding others. Yeah, so um, my Instagram is healing from PTSD for any listeners who aren't familiar. And um, this has been a really personal journey for me. Um, starting in my childhood, I went through several traumatic experiences throughout my life, but I kept on minimizing them. And I kept on telling myself, oh, it's not that bad. It could have been worse. And I just kept on trying to bury my pain and carry on with my life. And about six years ago, it all caught up with me. Um, the trauma compounded and I started to suffer from severe PTSD symptoms where, you know, panic attacks, nightmares, insomnia, constant anxiety, and it made it impossible for me to work, to sleep, to care for myself or others. And um, I really couldn't do anything other than cry in my home and I was too scared to leave. And um, 
ultimately I was diagnosed with PTSD. And when I first received that diagnosis, I was deeply ashamed. I had definitely internalized some of that stigma associated with PTSD. Um, and I didn't know anyone else out there who was struggling with PTSD. So I just really felt alone. And not only that, I didn't really see myself in any of the PTSD literature out there. Um, I think it's still very heavily focused on combat veterans and um, there's a really strong association there. So when I compared my experiences to that, I didn't really feel seen in that community. And again, it just made me feel like what I went through wasn't that bad. So I felt really isolated in my struggles. Um, but when I got to a certain point in my healing journey where I felt stable enough and also felt inspired to share my story with others to hopefully help other trauma survivors feel less alone. That's when I started my Instagram account and um, yeah, just started to post reminders out there, um, really wanting to give people hope to know that they aren't alone and that healing is possible. Yes, beautiful. Well, and it's amazing what happens when we do put our truths out there. I know part of your story is you, your family dynamic is that you you couldn't talk about what was going on with you in your childhood. Oh, yeah, it was. Um, and I, I think it also goes back to like comparison, too, because I am the daughter of a refugee from Vietnam who had an extremely traumatic past, um, you know, living through the devastation of the war and the aftermath, escaping her country on a small boat, um, and then coming to the United States. Um, like everything that I went through seemed so small compared to that. And um, I just felt like none of my struggles were valid because of that. And I couldn't bring it up. And um, I mean, I'm so grateful now that on social media and on podcasts, um, I think people are much more aware of trauma and mental health issues and that sort of thing. Whereas before I... I didn't have the knowledge or the vocabulary to explain what I was going through as well, which I think was um, a big part of the problem. So now it's like I can't go on social media without seeing a post about therapy or about, you know, feelings about trauma. And um, I'm so grateful for that, because I think it is giving people the knowledge and the vocabulary to start to verbalize what they're talking about. And then also, I think people on the other end who are receiving information from a loved one who is struggling, they have more knowledge. And um, I think they're building a better understanding of how to respond when someone comes to them and says that they're struggling. Yes. I'm so glad you brought up the comparison point of it because I know my philosophy and I've talked about it on the show and with other people is it's not a trauma race. And so yeah. whether you've had multiple and you have a super high ACE score, which is adverse childhood experiences, yeah. or you've had one traumatic event, you, if you are in pain, if it is impacting you, then you are worthy of healing and peace and all of all of that comes with that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up because it's true. How many people say, I know with my story, when I share it, people will say, oh my gosh, well, mine just seems so like small compared to what you went through. And I'm, I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no. If, if you've been hurt, you're hurt. Right. Exactly. And it's like, you know, these quote unquote, small traumatic experiences can still impact survivors in major ways. Um, you know, and, and it's like, in my experience, I went through all these things that I didn't think were that bad, but then they compounded and then did turn into something that was, that was that bad. And, um, 
you know, I, I think that this is like one of the messages that I always want to remind people of is that, um, you know, no matter how quote unquote small it seems, you deserve to heal because when we do compare and when we are like, oh, you know, it's not as bad as what so-and-so went through. It doesn't, we aren't giving ourselves the space to, to pay attention to that trauma and what our body is telling us. And um, if we keep on dismissing it, then we can't heal. So um, I, I really think that like learning to validate your experience um, is a really powerful first step toward healing because it does allow you to create the space for it. Yes. Amen. I, I agree wholeheartedly. So now you've written a book in the last, released a book in the last year, correct? Yes. Um, it's called You're Going to Be Okay. And it was just released last September, um, September of 2022. And um, it was really the book that I needed to read when I was struggling with PTSD and I didn't feel seen or supported. And, you know, I did, I am a reader. Um, I did turn to books when, after I was diagnosed with PTSD and while they were really helpful in sharing information about like the science behind my symptoms and why I might re- I may react a certain way. It was kind of like, it was like very clinical, I would say. And it was like a lot of information that I didn't necessarily need. So I really wanted You're Going to Be Okay to be a source of comfort for trauma survivors. So they feel seen, they feel validated, and um, something to give them, you know, some tools that can help them along their healing journeys. Um, But also just to give them hope and you know, to help them feel like they aren't alone in their struggles. Yes. And now in the book, you provide what, 16 different strategies and approaches to healing trauma? Oh, yeah. So um, it is 16 lessons that I learned along my healing journey. They are the insights that I wish I knew sooner. Um, Like, for example, one is you can't erase your past. Um, Like, because I tried to just, I tried to erase what I'd been through in my mind. But the thing is, trauma will stick with us, even if we try to forget about what happened, it'll show up in all sorts of different ways. Um, It'll get your attention, no matter what you do. So, um, the only way to really heal is to face your trauma head on and, um, and, you know, work through it the best that you can. Ooh, yeah. I agree with that too. <laughs> Tell folks all the time. You have to go back into that darkness to get to the light because it's just, it's there. You keep right. You can't pretend like it didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Well, and it's not the way that trauma works. I mean, the the impact that it has on our brain now that, you know, we're understanding the impact on us um, so much better. Um, I used to have people tell me, just let it go. It's in the past. And now I want to go back to all those people that said that and be like, I couldn't let it go. It is actual science. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I know it's, um, that's, I feel like, you know, those, those sort of message, that sort of messaging has, um, it has been like, these are really common sayings that I think people have just relied on, like, Oh, like you just need to let go of it. And I think it like puts like, it, it's like I the problem that I have with a lot of these things is like it it is saying something like oh you're the problem as a survivor you're not able to let go of it when in reality it's the past not letting go of the survivor um so it's like it, I think that you know it can bring a lot of shame to someone where it's like oh why can't I just get over this why can't I just move on but yeah it's like we're after going through something traumatic like we evolve so 
to protect ourselves from something like that ever happening again. So um, it's like, so it's so natural to experience PTSD symptoms because it's, we're trying to protect ourselves. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. I love that perspective. Thank you for putting it that way because mm -hmm. that's brilliant and beautiful. I just, um, like I just told you, I was out on the beach and I had had this horrific fear starting to creep up. We've I've done so much healing work through EMDR and tapping and you name it. If it's come across my radar, I've tried it and done tremendous healing work. No more panic attacks. That, that's in, in the past. And we've processed a tremendous amount of the trauma. Uh, but this fear of open spaces was creeping up. And so mm. living in, on a beach out there, of course, I'm just like, vast ocean in front of me in and, and if it's not a crowded beach and there's just you know a few people out there big space behind me until you get to the resorts or the homes or whatever and so I've been doing some somatic work with it and and just allowing my body and touching my body where I feel it's starting to arise so sitting out there today I've again yeah. I'm healing a lot but I'm just making myself go out by myself no family just me in a chair, sitting in the surf and being in that open space and just allowing and welcoming the messages that I'm supposed to be getting and learning from whatever is arising. But um, oh, yeah, that's wow. so great. That's it hard is. to do it too, is. to actually stay in your body and to be like really practicing being present because especially when so many of us have learned as a coping mechanism to dissociate or it's just what we do to escape escape the discomfort um when fear arises and whatnot so um that's a really beautiful practice that oh, um, you just you. shared with us thank you thank you thank you yes and when dissociation that was my go-to i remember my therapist in the emdr t said to me she was like talking about something and then said well when you dissociate and i was like dissociate what are you talking about like it was the first time I that it, she had said those words to me and I was like oh my gosh I didn't even yeah. realize that's what I was doing to cope yep. as a little kid and when we would go back into memories I would see it as if I was watching a movie on a screen yeah instead know, of from my own eyes yeah 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 I know that it's it's so wild and when um it, it's like when you have someone when you gain that perspective and you're like, Oh, that's what's, that's what I was doing. That's what's happening. I feel like it can bring so much awareness to where we are now. So when it's happening, we can kind of um, catch it or reflect on it and be like, Oh, that's what's going on. But when you're just carrying out your life and you don't know about these things, it's, um, it's, it's really hard to, I mean, yeah, you, you just don't have awareness. <laughs> Right, right. Now, how are you doing along your healing journey? Are you still experiencing panic attacks? Or are you st is it it's still a work in progress? Or have you, um, I, I hate to say healed, because it's a healing journey, it's a journey, it's it's a constant journey, we continue to learn exactly. and blossom. Exactly. Um, so I, I completely agree on that. I will never say that I am, quote, unquote, healed. I actually believe that that's a myth. And um, the last lesson in my book is embrace the ongoing journey, because there will always be something that comes up, um, whether it is, you know, something that triggers you that is from the distant past that you buried so long ago, and it's just resurfacing now, or if, you know, we, we can't escape all suffering in this world and something new could come up that you may need to heal from. So yeah, I will never say that I am fully healed. Um, I will say that my, like most of my PTSD symptoms, I do not experience regularly anymore. Of course, there will be times when I get triggered and, you know, I'll have a few bad nights of sleep, I'll have some nightmares, I'll experience anxiety. But going from a place where I was having multiple panic attacks a day, I wasn't like experiencing insomnia, like terrifying, terrifying nightmares, um, to where I am now, I'm feeling like very content. But um, my healing journey looks a lot different now than it did five years ago. And it looks different now than it did you know, 
one or two years ago. Um, I think, you know, as we evolve, as we gain more information about ourselves, as we heal, um, that that means that our journey is going to change with us as well. So um, it's it's never going to be the same. And, you know, things that helped me six years ago don't don't serve me in the same way now. Um, so yeah, it's always, um, healing will always be interesting. I'll say that. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm, and again, I'm so glad you brought up the point that what worked six years ago doesn't necessarily, it's not that it won't work or maybe sometimes it won't work, but it's just, we, again, we evolve and we grow and we learn new skills or, Exactly. That particular skill was no longer needed. It got us through what it, what it needed to get us through in that moment uh, or that period of time. So yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for reminding folks of, of that as well. So I talk about building our huge coping skills toolbox all the time because we're going to rely on one thing in one moment and maybe something else in another moment. For sure. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, is there anything that you wanted to talk about specifically that we haven't had an opportunity to discuss yet? Um, I mean, I would just want to um, remind any listeners who may be struggling um, with PTSD or just um, from any trauma symptoms or are just struggling with mental health in general um, that you aren't alone and that it's okay to ask for support. Um, because I think that was one thing that has always been really hard for me is asking for help. Um, and that made me feel really isolated, but, um, connection really helps us heal. And even if you don't have a strong support system yet, even just connecting with a support group online, or, um, you know, even just connecting with strangers can make a huge difference. Um, And particularly if they're strangers who um, may not know you, but they can relate to what you're going through. And it can just it can just provide so much relief to know that you aren't the only one in the world going through what you're going through. Um, And I just want to remind people that healing is possible and that, um, you know, when you're dealing with trauma, it can feel so overwhelming and it can be hard to imagine a life without your trauma symptoms, you may just be thinking like, I need to, like, I just need to get used to living like this, like, this is it. But um, it may not happen overnight. Um, And you may not get there how you imagine, but healing is absolutely possible. So keep going. Yes. I, again, I say woo to all of that. Well, and to follow you on Instagram, because again, you have such beautiful Mm -hmm. insights to share. And, and when you, when you follow on social media and you follow someone uh, like Madeline, who um, is sharing personal insights on her own journey and how she's, she's gotten to this point uh, of healing. Um, but people leave comments. So, and so yes. you've got a great post. And so there really is a connection there. It's with strangers, but yes, because you can read these things and say, oh my gosh, me too. Or yes, I can totally relate or, oh, that's how they did it. So yes. Yeah, yes, that's exactly. Right. Right. Wonderful. So how do folks connect with you and how do they find your book? Yeah, so um, you can head to my Instagram again, that's healing from PTSD, or my website, which is just my name, madelinepopelka.com. And my book is available anywhere where books are sold, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, your local indie bookstores, if they don't have it in stock, they will most likely order it in for you. Um, I love supporting the local bookstores. So yeah awesome 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 well i'll put i'll put links and show notes everybody so you can and on socials so you can uh click to to find the instagram account and and website and uh i'll be sure to 
put a separate post out uh, with an Amazon link. And uh, so people can just go find that on my Facebook page and yeah, go order that book. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the beautiful work you do and helping others along their healing journey. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share a bit of my story here and creating the space. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us today on the Healing Place podcast. And remember, until next time, be gentle with yourself. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Hey, everybody. Terry Welbrock again. Just wanted to thank you for listening to the episode today and remind you to visit my website as well, terrywellbrock.com. You can sign up for my monthly Hope for Healing newsletter, which is also jam-packed with information and strategies and blog pieces and guest blog pieces and links to shows. Thanks for, again, being here and being a part of this healing space. I very much appreciate you. All right. Bye-bye.